Yeah, right. What's up, guys? John from Bennett's Customs. We are back on another episode. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed our previous one when we were out at the private speedway. Had a lot of fun. Um, did see in a few comments that uh, everyone thought the car performed really well, and it did. However, I did something to the motor, not exactly sure yet. I've either bent a valve or I've taken the top off a piston, but all repairable and uh, kind of not surprised. I've really pushed that motor probably farther than it was uh, intended for. So there'll be a little bit on that um, come couple videos. It's kind of just sitting up on the hoist right now, having a bit of a rest, but we will get back into that soon and get it back on so we can go and have more fun with it. Anyways, on this episode, this one is very special. Um, I've been wanting to do this for a very long time. And what we are going to try to create and do is dropping axles. So what I mean by that is we are going to do the age old trick of dropping a forged Ford axle. Um, this obviously works for other axles, doesn't necessarily need to be Ford, but the jig we are going to create is gonna be purely Ford from 28 to 48 axles only. Um, I've really wanted to do this for a really long time and it's not a very complicated thing but you really want to make sure everything is kind of lined up properly in order to get your camber right, your caster right and an even drop on both sides. You know I've been, I've been following a lot of people that have been doing it a lot. Um, two main guys would be Trevor Dewitt and Andrew Noller of Noller Customs. Um, they both are incredibly talented at dropping axles. Trevor especially has literally leaked a lot of secrets to me and um, you know, he, I, I even kind of said like, hey man, I want to do this for a YouTube video and he was all for it. But he gave me a lot of tips. We, we chatted on the phone lots, we did tons of FaceTimes and um, he showed me his jig setup and what he does and little small tricks that he kind of has learned along the way. Um, which is like amazing that he was even willing to kind of give his little secrets out like that. What I want to show you too, for those who don't know what the drop axle looks like, if we go over here, I can kind of show you a couple different variations. So on the race car, this is a standard Model A axle with no drop. The only thing that has been modified is I drilled the absolute crap out of it because it looks really cool. And we were trying to save a little bit of weight. Um, if you look, where the, um, so these are your bosses, and if you look between your spring perch boss and your kingpin, um, you can see that there's not a lot of curve. This is pretty flat, so that's how you can kind of identify a Model A um, I-beam. If you look onto my Roadster here, this has got a 32 to 36 axle. So these ones are probably the most common to use. Um, like the, the best one would be a 32 heavy axle if you were to have one of those. Um, but if not, the 32 to 36 axle is the most common. Um, they look very similar to the Model A, but they do already start to have a nice sweep um, in between the, the uh, spring perch and your kingpin. So um, that one is factory. This is factory. If we walk over to Kyle um, and Ben's Roadster, Ben has got an aftermarket aluminum like four inch drop axle that's aftermarket. Uh, and then if we go over to Kyle's here, Kyle's got a Super Bell um, style four inch drop axle as well. So these ones are manufactured like this. They're not made from, a, from an old traditional axle. Um, these are kind of purely an aftermarket purchase, which is great. So, you know, if you're looking to, to just buy one, there's plenty of different companies if you jump online. Traditionally speaking, you know I really like trying to kind of do stuff that the guys were doing back in the day. And, um, and this is kind of one I really want to learn how to do and do well. The whole thing about this video is kind of the history behind the axles, where they started from, building the jig, obviously getting a few axles in here, and really a lot of trial and error. I'm purely going to be learning this as I'm speaking to you guys as well. I've done a lot of homework, a lot of research, I've asked a ton of questions, and I really want to make sure that it is clear from me to you, um, you know, about this and how, how I'm going to try and create a jig that is basically loosely based off of 
um, the, the, the names I've already mentioned and a few other ones. Um, Lee Grant, fellow Canadian uh, from LG Speed and Custom, he just recently put up a, um, a video of him dropping a few or dropping a Model A axle. Um, his is a little bit different. His um, kind of sits in a jig upside down and his jack or ram would sit under here and it kind of pushes up that way. Um, and he's got it down to a fine art, uh, which is really, really cool. Um, I'm gonna try and build mine upright so that the axle will sit on the jig level and we will bring the press or jack down this way and it'll kind of bend the axle down. Reason being for this, kind of back in the day, like Abe Kobik, I think that's how you pronounce his name. He would be kind of the guy that would be, I suppose, like he kind of had the idea to be able to, um, you know, work with the, the ends of a Ford I-beam. Um, Ed Stewart or Ed Axel Stewart was his name. Um, and he was out of San Diego or Suncrest, I believe. He's probably the second most known other than John Moore of Moore Axles from Oakland. Um, and those two guys were kind of the, the dominant guys in the, in the industry that were dropping axles back in the 1940s. They have kind of done two different styles. I think that from memory, uh, Axel and Abe had kind of collaborated into the drop hammer method, which um, I will show you photos of their, the Axel that they kind of did. Whereas I think more drop was kind of definitely more known for a cleaner drop. And what I mean by that is just a little bit more um, parallel through the drop itself and making sure that there's no real kind of weird looking obscure um, kinks or anything like that. I think that's kind of maybe where the, the name like Dago, Dago axles, which a lot of you are probably familiar with. You know, you could see someone that had an early drop axle underneath their car and you'd right away be able to know that that was a Dago axle. Um, whereas the more drop axles were slightly different, a little bit nicer, elegant looking. Um, so you could definitely kind of tell them apart. This was kind of a thing that was done purely for trying to get your car lower. Um, and by that advantage, you were kind of putting a bit of rake on your car. It was helping keep like aerodynamics. This was all from when they were racing on dry lake. The cool thing is, is that when you're doing this, you're not really altering the suspension too much. So your shocks that are still on there are still working the exact same way. You're purely just altering from your spring to your kingpin. So this area is dropping, which essentially is lowering your frame and the whole front of your car where your tire is gonna sit in the same uniform area. The only other thing that you have to make sure that you need to alter is your steering arms. So they do have lots of available aftermarket drop steering arms that you can put on. You can also use a traditional um, round back spindle or square back spindle and you can, you can drop the arms very easily. I've done it several times and it works really, really well. We really wanna get into the specifics of, of axles themselves pre-building the jig. And this is purely to learn kind of like what you have, what axles would be the best to drop and uh, which ones you'd wanna maybe steer away for if you kind of had the option. First of all, you got your Model A I-beam axle, which is the one I was explaining to you on the car. This is another one here. Very, just kind of, they don't have any sweep at all. They're basically straight all the way through from your um, spring, or, yeah, your spring perch up to your kingpin. Um, this goes from 28 to 31, and these are very common for using. Um, there's kind of no real issue with using these at all. Um, lots of guys do them. The most common one, again, I mentioned would be the 32 heavy axle um, or the 32 to 36 axles, which is this one here. Uh, unfortunately, it isn't a heavy axle and a good way to identify a heavy axle is the boss between here is two inches from the top and bottom and the webbing will actually go flush right into it. So you can see this one's got a little step down and it kind of comes in, whereas the 32 heavy axle, this is all kind of one piece where it comes down into it. So you can, you can tell by the look of it, it looks almost like a truck axle. The one I got here, this is 3941. And the, the biggest thing that you can see on this one is how narrow it is between your spring perch and your kingpin. Um, 
These ones, they're definitely still able to drop. The only thing is, is that you do kind of hinder, um, you know, a lot of area between, if you're running like split wishbones, you have a wider set between each of your spring perches here. So this is wider by, I believe it's two and a quarter inches. So your spring would be like 33 and a half inches from memory. So if you're running split wishbones, you know, this is a lot wider than your, your traditional um, 32 to 36 or your Model A one. So when you're turning, you're not gonna have as much turning ability before it's gonna be hindering your kind of, or hitting your, your, your wishbone. So these ones usually wouldn't be the most common, but having said that, I have seen them drop. And then you got your 48 axle, which is kind of very similar to this too. And the reason why I'm kind of trying to educate you, and I'm probably making a few screw ups as well, or a lot of guys would know a lot more than me. I'm still young, so I'm just absorbing what I can. The biggest thing that I've kind of had, had said to me was, you wanna make sure that you're building this in order to do all axles. If you just wanna do Model A axles, then you can build your jig for that. But because I wanna do 1928 to 1948 axles in the same jig, you have to kind of apply that. So knowing that this one, and again, this is the most, this is your narrowest axle by quite a bit. So whatever you're gonna be making, you kinda of almost wanna take measurements off your narrow axle as far as just kinda of where everything's gonna sit. You also want to take into consideration that um, your Model A boss perch here, so from Model A, so 28 to 31, this is two and a quarter inches from top to bottom between your spring perch boss. Um, this applies also to the 37 and up. Between that, is your 32 to 36 axle, and this is two inches between here. So you wanna make sure whatever kind of little attachment you're making is, is, is being able to be made for both. So realistically, the best thing to do is kind of just like make your measurements off each axle, take them all, and you know, try and find the happy medium that's gonna work so that you're able to, to um, use all. And I'll explain that throughout the video and where the kind of the crucial points are that you'd, you'd wanna make sure that you're taking that into consideration. Another really good thing too is you wanna make this thing heavy duty. That was Trevor's biggest thing he told me too. He said, whatever you do, make it ugly, make it massive and you know, like just add a heap of shit to it. Doesn't matter how heavy it is, the heavier the better. All right, so after a little bit of a history lesson, I'm pretty excited to get into this. So hopefully I didn't bore you too much with all that info, but I just wanted to give you a little bit of a backstory on the drop axle itself, the variations of axles, and we are gonna get into building this thing right now. <laughs> going to kind of give you a real quick sort of example of what I'm trying to create. So what we have here is some I-beam. I've got another little piece sitting on top of it. And what we are going to try to achieve is making a little jig that will kind of hold this in place. So it's going to float essentially. So we're going to weld to this or to a piece of flat bar then, then that we will weld to this is the um, a piece that's going to kind of hold between. So I'm just going to show you like th here. This is our beam and then our axle is going to go like this and we're going to have a little piece here and here. So and then the kingpin will drive around through that. Kind of a good tip that uh, I learned from a couple of the guys is if you use a spindle which is totally like common and a lot of guys do it, they kind of put on their, their spindle, they'll like face the edge, they'll bolt that or they'll weld that and use it. But the only thing is, is that these have brass bushings in them. So when you're heating up and putting that amount of pressure on the axle, it's putting pressure on those brass bushings. So eventually 
you're going to run into an area where these are going to start to stretch out and the heat will also kind of, you know, start to break them down and then you're going to be left with a bit of slop which then in long term after say four or five axles that you're dropping in the jig, it's going to wear those, those bronze bushings out and then you're going to be left with, um, you know, a few degree of slop which is not what you want. So luckily what we found was uh, in a little, I always keep everything. So. I get made fun of for being a hoarder, but it's a good thing because I found these two um, axle ends that have come off. They've obviously been gas axed, as you can see, and these are the same as our um, 37 to 41 here. So what we are going to do with these is we're going to weld those like that, and that will allow us to get this inside here, and then we can throw a kingpin directly through them all. That'll hold it into place. Once that's fixed in this area, we have to work on a little jig on the back here, which I'll explain when we get into that. And then hopefully it'll make a little bit more sense when this all kind of begins to take shape. And I'll show you how we are gonna put it into our Metal Master HPM 30 ton press. First off, what we need to do is quite a few measurements. I wanna make sure we get everything square, a true 90 degrees. We're gonna tack all this together. We are just gonna pull out the MIG, crank the heat up, and try and get a lot into it. And we are gonna add bits and pieces as we go. I think once I get the final shape um, where I like it, I will probably go through and just add material where I can to try and make this thing stronger. And then it's time to get the torch out and heat these things up. So quickly, um, I have this Kingpin Model A hollow. Probably not the best to use. I'd rather use a solid one, but I can't find my little box of Kingpins. I don't know where they are. So for the meantime, to get this mocked up, I had an old one. There's two of them. I found a bolt that fit in really nice, and I'm gonna slide that in, and I'm just gonna weld that. Reason being is because I am using two ends of an axle that are gonna be welded to the beam, and this has got to slide all the way through. Unfortunately, it's too short by probably almost an inch and a half. So I'm going to weld this piece on and hopefully I'll be able to drive this down into and that will sit like that. And then we can drive it out once I find the other kingpin that is solid or I might just jump on the lathe and make one that fits. Um, and hopefully that'll be the, uh, the go. So I'm just going to TIG weld this one out hopefully making sure that it stays very true and then we can kind of get everything mocked up slide that in hold the axle now we're we're sailing we're clear we're we're clear sailing
so you can kind of get the idea of what we're trying to achieve here. I've just run a fair few welds around this part of the I-beam. I did put a nice plate on top of there that's um, 10 mil thick as well. And uh, that's just to try and double it up a little bit. Um, I'm probably gonna get pretty like carried away with like welding plate on once I got the whole thing fixed and just making sure it stays true. I don't wanna weld too much stuff on and, until we get a bit of distortion if that's possible. But you can kind of see what we're trying to do here. As long as I can keep this level um, and I'm gonna try and just go through the axles and pick kind of the best one that'll kind of help us. Um, but you can see what we're trying to do here. So I'll end up probably coming in here and cutting this one on an angle so we can get it um, fitting nice and um, flush up to the side of this vertical piece here. Uh, and then a well, as well as this one too. Um, and then we can get it nice and close so that we don't have much hangout. The more hangout we have, the weaker it is. We want it to be nice and close, less material. Um, and yeah, maybe even put some gussets in there if we really have to. Um, I'm just gonna kinda do some measurements. I don't know if I quite need it this high. Um, that's a lot of area for a drop, which we probably don't need. So I could probably almost drop it another, say 50 mil, and that's still gonna allocate enough room for, for uh, getting in there, which will be good. Um, but yeah, once we kinda get this area sorted and welded in intact, then we can kind of work on the bracket and the track and stuff we have to do on the, this side. This is kind of maybe more the complicated side, but you get the idea. And then obviously this whole piece will slide into the press. So the press will run this way and it'll kind of sit right about here. So we're getting very close. So I'm gonna do a couple more measurements now. Um, and then we're gonna start to um, mark these lines on here so I can get them into the cold saw and uh, get them cut. Um, and then we can kind of can continue moving forward. Okay, so I've just got the um, axles tacked into place and all I did with that is, as I showed you before, they had been like gas axed pretty badly. Um, so what I did was I used our six foot level across the top of the axle, make sure everything was dead um, uh, level to the actual jig, to the table, to the 90 degree vertical face that we got here. Um, yeah, just checked measurements million times before tacking anything. I utilized this ruler when I had it out and I was able to just kind of do a, a rough line on the uh, on there and just threw it in the saw, cut them on an angle that was, you know, relatively close, beveled the edges. And what I'm gonna do is just do multiple passes with the MIG. I've heated it up with the torch just to put a little bit of heat in there, um, just to just to uh, help the, the weld adhere a little bit better. Um, but having said that, this is forged, so I don't really need to like use nickel rod if it was cast or something like that. But I am, um, yeah, I've just got the welder cranked up and just trying to put as much heat and penetration into that as possible. I did uh, keep the same height, so there is definitely a lot of room under here, but I like that I can kind of just get under it. Um, you know, potentially we'll probably make like a little guide uh, in the future for when we get a really nice smooth drop, um, something like that. I've also got this washer in here as well. Uh, and that is purely because this is just slightly under that two inches or two and a quarter, don't remember. Um, but what I've done there is it's just so I can kind of fine tune each axle that goes in there and make like a proper shim that fits really, really well. Um, and that way, when I go to do the disassembly, when we pull that out, we can kind of slide it out with, without damaging the top or bottom of these, this axle that I'm welding to. So I don't know, it's all trial and error. I'm just kind of coming up with a few ideas as we go. And 
I'm just hoping it'll work. Otherwise, yeah, it can kind of machine up some spacers or something that'll, that'll fit properly um, on the lathe. So I've just done one pass, everything's tacked into place, and I'm just gonna kind of bounce around, try and get this thing fully welded into place. Uh, making sure that we can still pull our kingpin or our guide um, out and then once that's done then we can kind of slowly get to the back side and, and uh, come up with an idea for that. multiple passes done on the uh, two axle ends that we've put in there. Um, really pleased with that. I still might end up having to add a few gussets to it um, purely just to kind of, again, like I said, make it big and robust. Um, what we need to do though is kind of start to figure out and work this area back here. Um, with this style set up, I'd like this to sort of stretch the axle as well as drop it. And what I mean by that is we wanna sort of keep our track width within, um, you know, say half an inch either side. I don't want it to be coming in any anymore. If anything, if I can just keep it nearly spot on, that would be perfect. And the way to do that is we obviously need something to kind of hold the back of this um, as well as a guide for something to kind of go up and down. What I have is an idea. A lot of guys can just util utilize like washers or something, but I have a few few bearings and then this three quarter inch bolt. Um, whether or not I actually use the bolt or if I just use some three quarter inch shaft and uh, make something. But what I'd like to do is run a bolt through here that has something on the bottom side of it, like a flat plate. And then these would be fixed to it. I have three bearings, so that you got two now, but I have three. And what I could do is run this up and down on a guide. So this is allowing the axle to move up and down vertically while this is actually dropping. But because this has a pin through it where your spring perch is, and this is fixed against a set of guides, the, the axle will actually essentially stretch because this can't be pulled that way at all. So once we start heating this area up and the ram is pushing down this will actually have nowhere to go but just down vertically, allowing it to stay the same um, length. Um, and what I'm gonna do as well is, I wanna make sure that I can do the narrow axles. So your 37 to 41 are your narrowest axles. So I wanna make sure that I can still get those in here as well um, with making some guides. So each axle is slightly different, but if I can kind of allow these to be fixed in one position. And then what we could do is just add, say some flat bar. Uh, I'll just grab some here. This is pretty thick flat bar, but you'd get the idea is we could just, this is our face. I could then put a little bit of flat bar on there, tack this into place, and then there's our new guide. So it just basically, you wanna make sure that you're kind of working off of um, being able to utilize if you want to do those 28 to 48 axles for this. So I want to make this universal for all Ford axles. Um, so I'm just going to make a few more measurements. We're going to try and see if we can plumb these up. Once that's done and we kind of fix a few more areas and add a few gussets, we're almost at the point where we can set this up in the, in the press and see how it's going to work. If we're happy with it, I'm, I'm just going to turn on the oxy and heating it up and just go for it. What do we got to lose, you know? All right, so what I did was had a bit of flat bar, just made two pieces, and uh, I'm just, they're basically, it's the width of the axle plus, um, I'd say three sixteenths or a couple mil, 
um, and that's just so that I can slide this off and on. I'm hoping this works, it may not. So I may come into difficulties once it's actually dropped to be able to get it off. That's why I've utilized a washer underneath so that when I do undo it, I can kind of slide it forward. The washers will pop out and then I'll have a little bit of play up and down this way to be able to slide it off. Hopefully that'll work. But what, this is kind of what I'm, what I'm thinking is if I run it through, I'll put my washer on the top here. So I'll run it through like that, another washer on the bottom, and then it'll come through. I'll probably put a washer on top and bottom, but. So this doesn't quite fit perfectly. I, I may modify it. It's a weird size though, so unsure what I'm gonna do, but I'm still thinking that once the, there's pressure against this guide when we have our little setup with our bearings, it's, it can only go one way. So essentially it should be okay um, to just utilize it the way it is, but we're, we're just gonna work with what we got now and then we're gonna test it and if it fails, then we know we need to rectify it. So that's what I'm looking at right now. And then what I'm thinking is maybe I make a piece that I can weld to these that then will kind of pivot over here maybe or maybe I make a bigger one that comes down and run a three quarter inch hole through both sides that then I could either put a bolt, like three quarter inch bolt on either side, pack those bearings and then put a nylock nut on the end so they can pivot and then if the bearings get worn out we could pull them off and rechange them. Or I could just run a shaft the whole way through, slide our bearings on, put a washer on with a couple tacks and we'd, um, we'd be laughing. So, or maybe even drill a hole and put a split pin in it. That would work as well actually. Like even that way, a little bit more play, a bit narrower. So once this is, I'm thinking like once we got a, a drop in this, we got to try and slide this up over. So if we're lengthwise here, we got a longer area to have to pop over and on. Um, so maybe, maybe that'll work. We got the old, the old seagulls back. Just flew it all the way from New Zealand. Hey guys, what's up? He's straight, straight, walks right past us straight into eating. Can't believe it, eh? The guy eats, I tell ya. Chicken. All right, so what I got here is kind of the little jig setup that we're gonna make that's gonna slide onto the axle. And how I've designed this is, internally here, this red piece that you see, if you can imagine, that is the axle. And one thing you wanna take into consideration is those 28 to 31 Model A axles and your 37 and up are that two and a quarter inch tall um, boss, whereas the 32 to 36 ones are two inches. Um, so I've made this for the two and a quarter, and then what I'll do is I'll add a spacer um, that will allocate for the, the area um, not used for the 32 to 36. Um, so that is the axle. Basically, if you were to imagine, axle's gonna slide over like that. This is gonna go straight through. I was thinking about the bolt thing as well, going like it was loose and how could I make that work? Well, I could actually just use a spring perch. Um, there's no reason why I can't. I got a couple old Model A ones here that I could use. So I can bevel this edge, slide it right in there, nice and tight fit. Everything's gonna work out really well. So. I've just tacked this into place. This is gonna go on top like that. I'm actually just gonna run the bolt through to make sure that we do have the exact um, square setup. I don't, want to, I don't want anything to be kind of out by any means. So I'm uh, going to try and take up the space for this. And I'm going to run our bearings. And then I'm going to run, <clears throat> say, how many is that? Three, six, nine of those. This is kind of what it's going to look like, sort of. And then on this side, we will do the exact same. Three, six, nine. I will make proper spacers too on the lathe, but for now we're gonna just pack it with our washers. Um, and then that guy, 
that guy. We'll use a nylock knot too, so we can kind of adjust it and still let the uh, bearings turn. So those bearings are, in fact, actually I don't. I can tighten that right down and they're still gonna pivot. So those are rolling really nicely. So I'm gonna get rid of these outside guys. That is now kind of square, so we could put a clamp on this, make sure everything is square this way. Um, and then once we have that all square, that can essentially be the piece that's gonna slide over top of the kingpin down to the spring perch, bolt goes through, and now we have these really strong guides that are gonna allow that axle to slide up and down, but then it will um, allow it to stretch to keep our stock track width. So hopefully this works. So, one thing I had to take into consideration was the boss top um, to bottom on here is slightly bigger than there, uh, interesting enough. Maybe this one's worn down. I did measure the other ones. I kind of had welded everything up and went to stick it on and it was obviously too short between here and here. So, I uh, was able to modify it. Um, I just kept playing around with that bolt and I just hated how much slop there was. I just, yeah, I just didn't think it was right and I didn't want to put too much pressure on the actual spring. Um, you know, basically be putting a lot of pressure on the bottom, uh, the edge that would be pulling in. So um, I did want to use an original spring perch. I had a Model A one here. It had a bunch of uh, damaged threads on the bottom, so I cut them off. Um, and I beveled the top so that it actually fits this. I've put our bearings on, so you can see we have those. They spin really, really nicely, nice and solid as well. Um, and we've just packed it full of washers for now, but uh, everything's kind of welded all the way around. So hopefully, um, you know, it doesn't bend like the bolt itself, the high tensile bolt. So anyways, we put it on, obviously being a two and a quarter, I have had to kind of just shim it and I'll probably make different shims as I go and try different things, but this is kind of what I want to do, if this actually works. Yep, sweet. And I've made this side to side. I probably could have made it tighter so it really holds the axle, but I also thought just for getting it off and um, purposes of when it's actually this side's dropped, it'll be easier to slide off. Um, I think I'll probably just keep this. But once it actually makes contact, as long as these are even, it should make contact to them both at the same time. And then it'll allocate and let that roll up and down on our uprights. And then, you know, essentially it's holding the axle and one should, should be able to get some stretch out of it. So what I was thinking again, I've mentioned it, I might set this back say half an inch from where we are going to put it, um, and then I can actually set these in here, tack those on, and you know those are our shims that we can kind of use, or I can even just clamp them into place. So there's a little bit to kind of think of prior to wanting to weld it all in, and then a few more bits to um, gusset, and I have a feeling we can start to trial this. And uh, whether or not it's going to work for a shot, or massively screw up and cut and re-alter it. That's just kind of the way she goes. So we can only hope for the best, expect the worst.
All right, so this is kind of what I've come up with so far. You've kind of watched me just go over it all and weld it together. Um, and yeah, I'm just kind of made it big and ugly and hopefully relatively strong in order to, uh, to withstand the, the pressure. Um, I think our best bet is to actually just try and put it in the press, maybe apply a bit of pressure and just kind of see what it does. Uh, one thing I probably would have liked to have done is maybe like notch these out so this actually sits inside flush with that. That would have been a pretty kind of neat idea, would have been a lot stronger. Um, you know, only got a weld on this, this inside piece here so there's nothing really for that to be supported on if, if uh, there was pressure pulling this way. Um, but I'm hoping kind of with using the I-beam, I've added a big piece of flat bar on this backside and overlapped it um, and hopefully that'll kind of take a brunt of the, uh, of the pressure. But yeah, we're just gonna put it in, maybe mock it up, see what it does. Maybe um, just put, use a sacrificial axle and go number one, let's go, hang it on the wall, say this is the first one we've ever dropped. Could be f***ed. We're gonna try and lift it into our Metal Master um, HBM 30 ton press. And uh, I think from doing research, I think 30 ton is gonna be more than enough to be able to do this. Um, with having the air over hydraulic, I think it'll be really nice to be able to kind of just have that pressure on hand or on the foot, as well as heating up at the same time. You know, honestly, like if we wanted to, we could use that old press and fully reconfigure it and, you know, make it a, a, a permanent fixture. But for now, I think being able to slide this thing in here, um, we should be, should be coming up with some good luck. So let's give it a go. Who's the new professional in here, right? This guy's going on holiday, holiday and bloody, Max bloody up. Max Holiday. Oh, Ooh, just, just in the nick of nicks. All right, so if you let, if we're to, yeah, <laughs> might have to put the axle in and then clamp it and see what it's gonna do. Is that all right? Yep. Okay. Ooh, shiza. Something this hard, eh? Yeah, I, I could cut that, but I don't have anything to cut it. This. That. It's like this and like that, and yeah, that, but then I gotta like disconnect it and stuff. So, I'm gonna try my best on getting this thing set up in here. Probably should have done it prior, but. <laughs> Just go for it and whatever happens, happens. Don't think, do! All right. Okay, so we are set up, I think. No idea, I'm, we're fully going in blind here with this, but um, we've got the jig set up, everything is parallel, everything is level. The axle is in, we have our little spacers. I made a bunch of these. Um, I got some three inch ones, some three and a half, two, two and a half one inch ones. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make like a little rod that'll come up and I can just throw these in there and they're, they're kind of our, you know, to essentially help us sort of uh, get the gauge of what we're gonna do. So I have measured, we're about two and three eighths. So, not quite two and a half, but we're gonna be a little conservative on this one because it is our first drop. We have no idea what we're doing, so um, we're just gonna give it a try. I do know that once I've, um, 
So over here, kind of off camera, I had put in these little 30 by 30 square tubes um, and they're just helping locate the axle itself to keep it centered. Um, once that's centered, and then again, I've mentioned these guides before. This is a 10 mil, 10 mil flat bar. Um, and that's just allowing about, yeah, about 10 mil of a gap. So that 10, so I'm basically gonna lose 10 mil, I believe, over the track width, um, if that makes sense. So what I'm gonna do though, as well as I do need to shim this backside too. So once I have a bit of load on it and my bearings are pressed up against the guide, then I'm gonna measure this here and subtract our, um, our two and three quarter, and then I'll just shim this so that everything kind of sits where it's supposed to by the time it gets to that point. So hopefully that'll kind of help us get our caster angle correct, or our camber angle, sorry. So we are basically ready to just try it. And so I got my safety glasses, got my gloves, we got the torch, got a nice heating tip, nice little rosebud end on it. And um, I have no idea how much acetylene we have. Probably could use LPG on this, our gas, which would be um, maybe a bit cheaper and a little bit easier to use. But I mean, the only thing we can really do is just go for it and see what happens. So we, uh, I reckon let's just, let's just do it. See, let's go, let's go for it. I'm amped, I'm actually amped. I'm kind of nervous, but I'm also really excited. Hopefully it just works. Or maybe we completely like distort this one and we just hang it on the wall and that's like a reminder of the first one we ever did. I'll punch in one of one. Of one. All right. Okay. Been a while. Yeah, I'll make like a cover or something, eh? like a cone. You can't get asbestos anymore, but something like that, that's like a... Yeah, blanket. I got a fire blanket. It would be good to just wrap around the whole lot, actually. Even yeah. that, that thing over there. 
Looks like it's kept it relatively straight. Yeah. So we're at eight, eight pound, eight ton. Well, so the only thing I need to know is how to shim this backside properly. That way it's coming down and that helps with the camber. So I just need to remember how to do that. I need a wire brush, eh? Kind of need to turn it. Maybe I can turn it. If I could turn it. Bunghole. Uh oh. We may have an issue. Shit. I just need to turn it so I can pivot off of it. Can you lift the other side? Yep. Ready? Just give it a wiggle. <laughs> yeah, okay, she's uh, Boom, dropped and it worked. That kingpin, not so much. All right, first things first, there is the rubble of our kingpin. Hindsight, we knew that was probably gonna happen. I mentioned that it was a hollow Model A early style kingpin and uh, we knew that that was probably gonna happen and it did. Um, so I think for future, like a solid style, so this is kind of your early style kingpin, hollow, late, later style, obviously solid, it's gonna make a massive difference. So I think because also I tried to extend that by welding that together, obviously there's gonna be a weak point somewhere, it was probably bent right where the weld was. Um, luckily we were able to get it cut out without any, interf any like interference to the actual jig itself or the axle, which was a bonus. There was just a little bit of a gap I could get the air saw in there. Um, but yeah, I'm super pleased with that. I think for first shot like profile, all I did was just hit it on the wire wheel just before. And um, you know, like that's pretty, pretty good for a two and a half inch over stock 
dropped axle. I'm, uh, I'm very pleased with that. I think the profile is really, really nice as well. Um, and you know, just from even just doing this one little bit here and heating it up, like I've definitely learned a lot, especially with the torch, making sure A, the heat is consistent the whole time, not too hot either. Um, you just want that nice cherry red, kind of dull orange. You don't want it to get any, any hotter than that. Um, and uh, yeah, I've kind of, when, we're, when I was talking about the back, where we have the, the um, our back kind of cold side, I should call it, um, I was kind of speaking to Trevor again, and uh, he had mentioned um, that whatever your distance is that you're gonna try and drop it, you need that under here as well. So you need to shim this as well, so that kind of comes down. So we never really did that. And I put those, uh, sliders in, those, that, that flat bar, and um, it sucked up about 10 mil. So essentially we lost, um, yeah, about that as far as our track width. Um, so I'm gonna learn a little bit more about it. I think it'll be really neat to kind of do a couple um, and really figure out the techniques and how to keep that uh, heat adequate and yeah, just try and kind of use the press, let it kind of do its thing, maybe release the pressure a few times, come back down on the pressure just so everything can kind of sit where it's supposed to. Um, but overall, really happy with the setup. I think, yeah, it definitely worked. I could probably modify a few things on the jig and it probably will go through a few different evolutions, I reckon. So for a first shot, um, you know, can't, couldn't be happier, really. I think what I'm gonna do is I might even just leave the video there um, and bring out maybe a part two, because essentially that was all about how to build the jig and a little bit of axle history and obviously dropping an end. Uh, part two, I would like to jump on the lathe, make a really nice kingpin um, or, or pin that slides through uh, and maybe something on the top of it that we could use as a, as a lever uh, in order to get it out in case it does want to get stuck. I know they, are, they can be quite stubborn to want to come out. Um, also, I'm gonna make uh, like a little spacer set up for where the kingpin is or where the press actually comes down to. So I'm thinking maybe I'll, I'll um, jump on the lathe and make this so it's kind of like a little pin that drops in that's got a nice little top on it. And then maybe we can get a little bit of distance between the actual ram and the axle itself. Um, as you saw before when, when we were heating it up, it was definitely getting quite close to the ram. The ram did get um, pretty warm, not like crazy hot, but enough to kind of go, okay, we need to do something here. So I think maybe a few heat shields uh, around the reservoir itself and the ram. And then, yeah, maybe another big spacer just to allow a little bit of distance. So we might be able to actually drop the press a whole nother setting and kind of set it up a little bit easier. Um, gonna make a stand for it as well on the other side, make sure everything is dead true and level. And uh, yeah, and then we'll try and drop a few more and then we'll learn about camber and all the rest of that stuff and how to adjust them when they come out because they are gonna be a little bit tweaked and. Uh, a little bit twisted, so I want to make sure that we can uh, get all that out and have an adequate axle that's dropped and that we could be happy to put in one of our cars. So, and I think it'd be really fun too. I think on this end, I'm going to sacrifice this axle because it does have a fair bit of damage um, to the kingpins anyways. Um, so I'm happy to just hang this one up on the wall as kind of the first one, but I do really want to drop this side with nothing under it. I just want to keep going until it's like a piece of taffy. So as much as the jig will allow us to drop it, I'm going to try and drop it. So it's probably going to be crazy goofy and yeah, I don't know. It'll just be really neat to just see the limitations of this forged material as well and just see how much you can actually um, pull it out. So I think it'd be really fun to do. Um, but anyways, hopefully you guys enjoyed that video. There was obviously a lot of information in that. Um, and that was a lot of fun. I've been wanting to build one for so long and finally was able to just kind of go, all right, let's do it. Let's make a video. Let's create a jig setup and try and drop an axle. Want to be clear, I'm not out there trying to like spoil people's secrets on, on this stuff. I'm literally just trying to encourage people. If, if we can 
create guys to get excited and get into this, this um, early hot rod scene, I'm all for it. I think it's be really, really fun. And, and uh, massive thank you to Trevor um, Dewitt, who, yeah, was patient enough and willing to kind of give me a few of his little secrets and was, um, you know, cool with us kind of sharing with you guys. Um, and yeah, just awesome dude, really, really talented fabricator um, and hot rod builder. And it was just really nice to kind of speak with him and bounce some ideas back and forth. And, uh, and Lee Grant from LG Speed and Custom as well. Jeremy Mang from uh, Victory Rod and Custom, both on, the, on Vancouver Island. Uh, and they kind of gave me a few tips and tricks as well, which was really, really neat. I mean, that's what it was all about back in the day. Guys were getting together, trying to create these things and, and figure out how to go faster and do all sorts. And that's kind of where this all originated and kind of came from. So it's just really neat to be able to try and kind of pay homage. I say that a lot to those guys back in the day that were doing this stuff that kind of paved the way for us. Anyways, well, um, yeah, see you on part two next week where we get into a little bit more nitty gritty about the axle themselves. Um, maybe we're gonna do, definitely gonna do some mods to the, to the jig itself. And I would like to run a few axles through, maybe a few different sizes. And, uh, and then we're gonna work on our camber and different spacers and a few other bits and bobs that we're gonna need in order to make an adequate, safe axle to put in. Um, but yeah, if you guys do wanna get dropped axles, especially in the States, uh, Noller Custom, Arson Axles, Trevor um, DeWitt does them as well. There's quite a few other guys, uh, Lee, Jeremy, they're both doing them in Canada. Um, there's guys, Valley Axel and Jeremy Page in Australia, they do them. They come with engineering certificates and stuff as well. So there's lots of guys to reach out if you do want to get your axles dropped. There's many more guys that are doing it too. As you can hear, it's very stormy outside at the moment. But me and Ben and the families are going on a weekend holiday away. So that's why we're cutting this video short because we need to get the tinny packed up, get our tackle boxes ready. We're going to do some fishing in some nice hot weather, and I cannot wait. So we'll see you guys next time. My man's got subs.